Welcome to the Foreign Correspondents Club of Japan. Uh, my name is uh, Michael Penn. I'm the president of the Shingetsu News Agency, and I will be your moderator for today. Uh, today we have uh, as our guest uh, one of our own distinguished members of the club. Uh, he, uh, of course, as you know, is Mr. Fumio Matsuo, and he is, uh, among other things, uh, the former Washington bureau chief of Kyoto News. Uh, he is a survivor of World War II. Uh, apparently he had a rather close scrape with death when he was a young boy uh, from an American bombing. Uh, and he spent most of his career uh, as a journalist uh, reporting from many parts of the world. And since his retirement from Kyoto News, he's continued to remain very active in public affairs, writing a number of books. Uh, and uh, his general perspective is that the historical relationships between Japan and the United States, the disputes and the, the war legacy is not something that should be suppressed. It's something that should have be opened up and discussed and resolved and new friendships created in that way. So uh, as for the rest of it, I'll leave it for him uh, to explain. But the reason he's here today uh, is because in 2009, he published a book basically advising President Obama to visit Hiroshima. So this man uh, saw into the future. And so now we want to hear uh, more from this prescient man. So please give a warm welcome again for our guest speaker, Mr. Fumio Matsuo. Thank you for uh, yeah, 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 this opportunity. I speak English, but uh, I'm not so perfect. So I ask the interpreter to just 私本当にあの名誉に思っておりますあの、お世話になっていることを感謝しておきたい。あ、グッアフトヌーン。イツマイオナーとビーヒアアットクラブトゥデイ。アズイントロデュースアイアムアメンバーオフデエフシシジェ。アンドオルドウアイエムエイティ
戦後50周年のドレスデンでのアメリカとイギリスとドイツとの和解の儀式をですねテレビで見ましてその後のアメリカのプレスの,あのカバレージをあの見ましたそれで一言で言えば日本はこのような儀式をまだやってないということにを大変ショックを受けましてそれで私が自らそれをまあその提案をしようということにつきます。And so, to put it very simply, on February the 14th in 1995, on the 50th anniversary、uh, of the end of World War II, I was on a business trip in Washington and actually from my hotel was watching on television and happened to come across footage of the reconciliation ceremony between the United States, the United Kingdom, and Germany, which was taking place in Dresden at the time on the 50th anniversary. I also followed very closely the United States、uh, press coverage, which followed after this. And looking also, I was really shocked. At thinking about the fact, well, Japan has not yet actually conducted such a ceremony. Therefore, I started to look into this more and also to propose such a ceremony myself. This is the first time I've been in the world. I've been in the world. I've been in the world. I've been in the w o r l これが私はそのまあ戦後のドイツと今の今のドイツと欧州との関係ユダヤの問題を含めてですねドイツが完全に第二次世界大戦のまああのヒットラーの出来事それにをドイツとしてまあけじめをつけているとクロージャーってことを使いますけどけじめをつけていると思うんですねそれに対して日本はまだそれをやってないんではないかという大きな面談問題提起があります。And so I will also from now、uh, be distributing copies of、uh, President Herzog's speech at the time, the,、uh, the then President of the Federal Republic of Germany. I was greatly moved by this speech at the time, and actually, I think it really represents, in we, when we look at the post war or contemporary Germany and compare in relation to Japan, a great difference there as well. It also looks at how Germany, for example, was putting so called closure、uh, to the acts of Hitler during the wartime, which made me think also, well, perhaps Japan has not done such a thing. Japan has Has not been able to reach such closure in regards to its wartime experiences, and this was quite a large issue to investigate. This is why, so, 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 this is why, あの学ぶ点はまだいっぱいあるんじゃないかとドイツの経験ですねそれでドイツとの,この落差ギャップというものを埋める努力を日本がまだまだしなければならないんではないかということを考えているわけです。And so, of course, this is a very large topic. And if we start to look at all of the differences between Germany and Japan, they are indeed endless. This is a very comprehensive issue. However, I believe if we focus on particularly the point in relation to the war, there is much which Japan can yet learn from Germany, particularly in regards to the experiences of Germany. And also, there is much that Japan can do to look at how it can bridge this gap between the experiences of the two countries. それには私がまあその82歳ですから小学校6年生ですね戦争が終わってました時にで戦争経験があるわけですまあ非常に私としては同世代のまあここにも何人かおられますけどまああの戦争経験という意味では私の世代ではまあ水珍しいほどの多くのまあ経験をしておりますでまあそれをちょっと最初にご説明してそれがなぜそのドレスデンの和解っていうものにですね、まあ、非常に感銘を受けてそれでまあこの本を書いてそれでまあ今大間さんがようやく広島にまあ来てくださるということで今このコメントをもとられるというそういうまあストーリーでありますので。そのことを少し喋らせていただきたいと思います。Uh, as I mentioned, I am now 82 years old, which means that I was in the sixth grade of elementary school at the time that World War II ended. This means, of course, that I firsthand experienced the war. There are several members of my generation also present here today, I believe,、uh, who also experienced the war. But I think I personally also experienced in various different aspects at that time as well. So, first of all, I would 
like to explain some of my own personal experiences, which can give some background about why I was so moved by the conciliation of Dresden. I would also like to, and this of course leads to what led me to write these books and also look at the issue of President Obama's visit to Hiroshima, which is of course finally going to be realized this week. So I will finally give a comment on that. So this is the story that I would like to share with you today. ま、and so on May the 27th this week, I will also be going to Hiroshima at the time of President Obama's visit. Of course, I'm not sure how close access I will be able to achieve at the time. However, I very much hope to just be there and experience the atmosphere or the sense of what is happening there as well. Um, it's not clear what the details of his visit will be yet. However, one thing which has been confirmed is that he will be laying a wreath at the Senate of the Memorial in Hiroshima. Therefore, I hope to be able to go there and witness this moment as well, which I think will also have a great meaning for uh, my life from here as well and where to go from now. And so in the US and in Europe, the US and in Europe, the US and in and first of all, to explain somewhat about why I was so shocked to see this uh, conciliation ceremony between the United States, Germany, and the United Kingdom in Dresden, I would like to share with you my personal experiences during the war. ま、第一にあの、2月18日ですね。ドリットル爆撃隊となるんですけど、ご存知でしょうか。ドリットル東京発空襲というあの、あの、言われておりますけど、B25という創発のアメリカの爆撃がアメリカの航空部管から出発し
And so at the time I could actually, because the plane was flying at such a low altitude, I could see the face of the uh, uh, deputy pilot or the vice pilot who was located in there as well. So I could see a Caucasian crew member in there very clearly. I could see that he had what to me seemed to be a very uh, large nose at the time. And this actually found, or I found out later that this was a man called Lieutenant Cole, uh, Richard Cole, the co-pilot yes. actually. Uh, but he was seen at such a close distance from me and that was actually the first white face which I ever came across in my life. それでまあ彼とは実はこれは余談になりますけどその後再会あの会いましてちゃんとのように1960年前に会いましていまだに彼は元気です100歳のでドゥリットル爆撃隊っていうのは80人の隊員で構成されたんですけど生き残りが今2人だけで彼はまだあの耳が遠くて私はもう電話で話はできなくなりましたけどまだ元気なので来年は75年のその記念日なので。まあ、もし彼が元気であればまた再会を会いたいとサンアントニオに住んでいますけど、まあ、アメリカの空軍では今第一,第二次世界大戦の生き残りの英雄としてはね数少ない人になる。And so this is uh, somewhat of a side anecdote, but I actually had the opportunity to meet with Lieutenant Richard Cole around 10 years ago, actually. Uh, he's now uh, reached 100 years of age, but he is still well, he is still with us. There were 80 pilots at the time who were involved in the Doolittle raids, and two of them are still surviving. So I had the chance to meet with him and build a relationship. Uh, we often spoke on the telephone after that, but he's now somewhat hard of hearing, so it's not possible for us to speak directly on the phone. However, I'm very much hoping that next year marks the 75th anniversary of those raids, so I'm hoping to actually go to the United States and have a reunion with him once again. He is living in San Antonio, and he is seen now as one of the very few surviving heroes of the Air Force at the time. メンバーとしてですね、大変その忙しい日々を送って、まあ元気なのでぜひ来年の再会を実現したいと思っています。Uh, so I actually hear from his daughter that he's extremely busy these days because he is one of the few remaining or few surviving、uh, heroes or members of the Doolittle Raiders from World War II. He is called to attend various、uh, United States Air Force events and so on as well. So he's very busy, but I do indeed hope that we can realize a reunion once again next year. でこれはあの文藝春秋に書きました論文をアメリカ大使館の非常にかなり国名に訳してくれまして英語になっておりますので今お配りしていると思いますがぜひ読んでいただきたいと思います。And I am now、uh, distributing another document, which is an English translation of an article I published in the Bungay Shinju.、Uh, this was from 2005, and it's also talking about my meeting with Lieutenant Cole.、Uh, so I hope that you can also take a look at that afterwards. I think this was、uh, also given great attention by the United States Embassy at the time as well, therefore translated into English. でそれが第一の出会いであります。第二の出会いは父親が陸軍の軍人であったために被告の善通寺というところにですね1944年の12月から45年の3月まで被告の善通寺というところに行きましてそこでアメリカの艦載機の傷少者を、まあ、あの経験しております。And so that was my first encounter、uh, during the World War II. I would like to speak also of my second. My father at the time was actually a, a soldier and officer within the Japanese Imperial Army, and he was based in Shikoku. So I was also there myself from December of 1942 through until March of 1945、uh, in a location called Zensuji, which is a temple located in Shikoku. So there I also、uh, experienced or could see firsthand the United States、uh, operations in the Kansai region as well. それから3番目が決定的なことですけどそれで私は故郷が福,福井県なんですね福井県あの日本海側の小さなそこで、えー、45年の7月19日あと一月で戦争が終わるという時に B29127 機ですかが来て福井の市で福井の市をまあ焼き払った時に私はその中におりましたそれでサ,サバイブしたわけです。
And the third experience was the definitive experience for me. Uh, after our time there, we moved to Fukui, which is where my ancestral home is located. This is a small town or a small area located on the Sea of Japan. And on July 15, 1945, so just one month prior to the end of the war, actually, I experienced the uh, air raids or the bombing of the city of Fukui by the United States at that time. I believe it was conducted by 127 B-29 planes, and the whole city of Fukui was devastated stated was burned and I somehow was able to survive these raids. Some survival no joking a kioni kiwadoi keken dai mashita. And so my survival or the miracle of being able to survive this was a very uh, close call. Somebody told you America was this ne sanju rock pats no show you down or this ne. I know Kawani Tsme Mashte, Wekara Otoste, Imano Yu, Imade Yu, Cluster Bomb this ne. その初期だと思います。それ、それを 200m and at the time, uh, the United States dropped 36 incendiary bombs on the uh, area, which were an early version of what today we would see as uh, cluster munitions as well. So they were loaded into well, baskets, which were put onto the planes, and these 36 of such bombs were dropped on the area. So this was a very uh, difficult, very, uh, shall we say, cruel form of weapon. <laughs> そのまま巨大な大きな親爆弾がですね、目の前の伏せていた水田に落ちまして、泥しぶきを防空付近にかぶっただけで、命はある今日は果たしていたら私は今日ないと思います。uh, however, actually, very luckily, we were taking cover or taking refuge in the uh, rice fields located where, uh, near our home as well, trying to take cover. And the bomb fell, and we could see the very large bomb there as well, actually, which contained these, uh, what we would see now as cluster munitions. However, it failed. It actually did not open and did not release its weapons from inside as well. If it had exploded and it had perfectly functioned, then, of course, we would not. I would not be standing here with you today. But the fact that that uh, weapon, the bomb, had been defective meant that somehow we were able to survive there uh, hidden within the rice paddies. And so somehow was able to survive well, you know, one of these nine lives, can we say, as uh, the phrase in Japanese. また、そういうことに、ま、基本的な人生のこう目標を定めることができまして、その後ま、学校の生活を経てですね、その辺のお話をすれば長くなりますけど、短く要約すると、ま、アメリカを志す専門家になり、で、共同通信に入ってアメリ
、ヘルツォークの演説であります、先ほど全文をお配りしたと思いましたけど、統一ドイツの2代目の大統領ですね、あの南北あのあの、東西ドイツが統一したからと、日本ではワイゼッカーという大統領が非常に有名でありますけど、それに続く大統領であります。彼の演説を私はその非常に感銘を持って受けました。So like、really Herzog, Germany. Japan, そこでまあ一言で言いますと彼の演説は長いんですけどここにありますように、まあ、やはりその死者と死者の死者に対するですねあの文明の起源にまで遡る日本人間の人間としての感情のに,に従ってですね我々はそのこの戦後50周年ということを考えたいという考えがよく出ていましてそこで彼のキーワードはですね総裁はできないと生命は生命で総裁はできませんオフセットできない苦痛は苦痛でできない死の恐怖を死の恐怖で総裁はできないというそのつまりドイツが悪いことをしたからドイツ国民が死んでもしょうがなかったという理屈はですねまあ私はその。受け入れませんということをはっきり言っていたんですね。これはなかなか私はあのまあ、ドイツがまあ、そのまでの経験の上でまあ、50年経ってですね。言える言葉であったということを思いますけど、大変私は感銘を受けました。オフセットしたというね。できないということ。And I have distributed today、uh, the full text of the speech by President Herzog at the time. It's quite long, so I won't go into all of it. But I think very much what comes through in this speech is his emphasis on the human experience and emotion as well, and looking also back to well, the dawn of time or the historical aspects of this as well. Particularly, the key word, which I think is very important to look at, is his talking about offset. He quotes that one cannot offset life against life, pain against pain, fear of death against fear of death, and so on as well. Uh, which is in the second page of his speech. So the fact that he talks about that this cannot be offset looks at recognizing the fact that Japan, oh sorry, that Germany did、uh, conduct things which were bad at the time during the war. However, that does not mean that the German people themselves should die as well.、Uh, that this logic of you know, life being offset against life should not be expected. And I think the fact that he could say this within his speech looks at or is very demonstrative of the experience of Germany in that 50 years since the war, what had happened during this time as well, the fact that Germany could say this. And so this was something which was of great interest to me. でしかもそこに出てたどういう出席者がいたかですねイギリス女王の名代としての検討デューク検討がいましたそれからアメリカからはジョン・サスカリビリ当時の統合参謀本部議長が出席してましたイギリスからは国防,国防インジ元帥という国防幕僚長一番トップですねその彼らが何も演説は示せんでしたけど敬礼だけしたこの写真がありますからぜひその私の英語の日本語の方に写真がありますから見ていただきたいんだけど沈黙の敬礼だけでその死者に敬意を称するというテーマに 100% ですね支持を与えてたでもちろんコール首相それからあのドイツ軍のドイツの全ての首相あの幹部もそこにいましたけど私はこの立派な儀式をですねなぜ日本ではやらないのかとやれないのかということを強く考えたわけです。And so it's also important to look at who was present、uh, at this ceremony、uh, as well, representing the Allies. For example, from the United Kingdom,、uh, the Duke of Kent was there representing the Queen, so the very highest、uh, point. From the United States, and B. Okay. was the name of the、uh, そして、アメリカの統合参謀本部議長、ジョイントチーフオブスタッフ。
spoke of this ceremony as well. Of course, from Germany, also the very senior uh, political figures, including uh, Prime Minister Kohl and, or Chancellor uh, Kohl and so on, were there as well. So this led me to question, why is it that such a ceremony was possible in Germany, however, either had not or could not be done in Japan? So ダウジョーンズとあとエビ通信との なぜ日本でこういうドレスデンの若いみたいな儀式がないのかってことを問題提起しました。そうしたらそれが日本エッセイストクラブ賞のその年のですね、あのまああの優秀エッセイストに全くサプライズでしたけど選ばれまして、私
uh, ceremony and so on. It's perhaps a little bit to translate the exact concept, but one of my friends called Mark Schreiber, who I believe is a member of the club but not able to be present today, uh, translated it as incense is burned. Uh, so this is, of course, in the title I'm talking about laying a wreath at Hiroshima, but this is looking at very much this uh, ceremonial aspect as well, which is also looking for giving condolences not only for the victims of the atomic bombing, but for all of the Japanese victims of the war. And also not only looking at the Japanese victims and experience that I am also proposing this should be reciprocated by Japan. I believe that the Prime Minister of Japan should also go to the memorial at the USS Arizona, uh, the location of the Pearl Harbor attacks, and also lay a wreath there in a reciprocal act, a mutual act as well. I researched to look at whether this had actually happened in the past. I believe that our former Prime Minister Yoshida had actually been to Hawaii, but I uh, looked into this several times and I found that actually this has not uh, taken place until now. ですからここで私としては謝罪についての意見も申し上げておきます。私は謝罪はこれをドイツ流にこのドレスデンの和解というのはドイツ流に謝罪,謝罪という、まあ、非常に難しい、ね、あの政治的な問題になりうる一種をうまくあの解決したとドレスデンの和解というのは知恵のドイツの先ほど50年の戦後のドイツの過ごし方の知恵の塊みたいに私は思っておりまして今の従ってだからオバマさんに。謝罪の言葉を求めることは必要ないという立場であります。同じく日本が、あのハワイに、あの日本の総理大臣が、安倍さんがもしハワイに行っても、同じく。謝罪の言葉は必要ないという立場です。お線香をあげるだけで、十分であるという立場です。And so I would also like to express my opinion about the issue of an apology and yes. whether it is needed as well. Uh, if we look at the case of Germany and the form of reconciliation which was demonstrated at this ceremony, uh, we of course can see that the issue of an apology is very difficult politically. And I believe that Germany was able to resolve this issue partly through how it spent its time in the 50 years following the war as well, how Germany acted uh, during this period of time. And the ceremony of reconciliation, I think, was in a way bringing together the wisdom of those years into a tangible as uh, aspect as well. Therefore, I don't believe, uh, or I'm not of the opinion that it is necessary for President Obama to give an apology when he goes to Hiroshima. Likewise, if Prime Minister Abe goes to the Pearl Harbor Memorial, I don't believe that an apology is necessary. I believe that the act of burning incense in condolences there would be sufficient. まあ、これはまたぜひ皆さんの質問の中で出てくると思いますけど申し上げておきます。それで今時間も限られておりますので最後にこれで今の現時点で私なりに提案がございます。それを申し上げてあの、えー、私の発言を終わりたいと思います。Um, of course we can go into further detail during the Q&A if it would be of interest to people. As we have limited time today I would like to go on to my last point and that is a proposal which I would like to suggest. 私は第一にやはり日本の方はですね今度はオバマさんが先に広島に来たということで安倍さんは非常にやはり日本,日本はやはりこれにどう対処するかという大きな課題を背負ったと思っております。And I believe that when we consider the position of Japan uh, and the fact that President Obama was first to come to Hiroshima, this is leaving a great question, I believe, for Prime Minister Abe and for Japan uh, as to how to respond or how to follow on from this. So, the first question is that I have to say 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 that 韓国と中国の人たちをどうするかと、この韓国と中国との関係ですね、まあ一言で言えば東アジアの和解というものをまだ日本は達成してないと、これをやはり完全にやはりあの達成することという課題を引きつあのあの突きつけられたというふうに思っております。And the first issue, I believe, is to look at the fact that, uh, or the situation or the position of the countries of Korea and China who are looking upon President Obama's reign of a wreath in Hiroshima with somewhat of a uh, cool or not so positive attitude, shall we say. And I think that it can be said that Japan has not achieved reconciliation within East Asia since the war. And so this act or this issue is bringing up and putting very much, putting the challenge to Japan about how to achieve this reconciliation. あのこの点について私は正直に申し上げますと去年の7月の,あの70周年の日本の声明ね分かりますねそれから年末の,あの従軍慰安婦問題日韓韓国の日本と韓国の合意この2つでね安倍さんは私は意外なほどの<笑>柔軟性を見せられたと思いますその一般的な評価とは違う、まあ、踏み込んだことを言って今でもコンサーバティブの間では安倍さんのこういうこの去年の2つのこの和解の出方にあの態度に対してね
不満の言葉も出てるというふうに聞いてますけど私は非常にあのそれなりの努力はされたと思いますけど完全なものにはなってないとそれはいまだに中国と韓国の,あの反応を見れば明らかでありましてこれを完璧に終えること、まあ、す,べすべて完結することですねこの東アジアの和解をこれがこのオバマさんの広島訪問の後日本に託されたあの課題ではないかというふうに考えています。And if we look at the particularly two events which occurred last year on the 70th anniversary of the end of World War II, first of all, the statement which was given by、uh, Prime Minister Abe marking this anniversary, and then at the end of the war, the、uh, agreement which was reached by the、uh, South Korean and Japanese governments in regards to the so called comfort women issue.、Uh, I think that these are two points which demonstrate a surprising flexibility from、uh, Prime Minister Abe at the time. Of course,、uh, the opinions of many conservative、uh, Uh, thinkers are perhaps not satisfied with what he did in regards to this or the attitude which was、uh, given towards reconciliation in regards to these two issues.、Uh, however, I personally believe that certain effort was made、uh, within these two actions which were conducted last year. However, of course, when we look at the response in China and Korea, we can say that this is not yet perfect. Therefore, I believe that the question or the challenge which is posed to Japan following President Obama's visit to Hiroshima is how to bring closure to these issues within East Asia. 私はそのことで、すでに私もこの本にも書きましたし、この間、毎日新聞の5月12日のインタビューでも答えておりますけど、私はだから、小田さんあの、安倍首相としてはですねあの、コントロバーシャルなことはいっぱいありますけど、その南京の虐殺の現場、南京に対する喧嘩もやはり選択肢の一つとして考えるべきじゃないかと。それからこれ私が強く申し上げますけど、重慶に日本は爆撃してるんですね、差別爆撃をしております、重慶に対しても、中国に対してはやるべきだと思います。And、uh, so I've written about this in yes, my yes, book yes. as well,、uh, and also in a recent interview with the Mainichi Shimbun, the Mainichi newspaper, in、uh, just this month. And of course, it's somewhat controversial, but I believe that Prime Minister Abe should consider as one option traveling to Nanjing and laying a wreath at the memorial or at the site of what occurred there as well.、Uh, Japan also、uh, was involved in、uh, acts of killing in j u k e which is Chongqing, I believe, in China as well. So I also believe、uh, that the message of what he could do or say. In regards to these locations, is something which should be put to consideration. So, the Chinese and the Chinese are in the same way. 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 The Chinese are And in regards to Korea and the comfort women issue, one、uh, step which Prime Minister could consider as a way to go closer towards reconciliation in regards to this issue would be for him to write a letter to the women or to the surviving comfort women as well as a way to go deeper in regards to that effort. So, after that, the Kenka Gai Kou という関連で私も短くもうこれでやめまして、あの、あの、クエスチョン、アンダンサーの方にセッションに移りますけど、最後に言いたいのは、今、なぜか、安倍さんが非常に親しいと言われるプーチンロシア大統領にもですねハバロスコにあの日本人の慰霊碑があるんですねそこに花を手まけてもらいたいと思います。And also, when we look at this issue of、uh, what I'm calling the、uh, wreath diplomacy as well, I think the last issue is in regards to Russia.、Uh, it seems that Prime Minister Abe and Putin are for some reason quite close these days, but there is a memorial to the fallen Japanese in Pavlovsk、uh, in Russia as well. And I believe Pavlovsk, Pavlovsk,、uh, where I believe that Prime Minister Abe should also be involved in a wreath laying ceremony there. In 1995, the Japanese government has built a memorial to the fallen Japanese. And、so, this is a memorial to the fallen Japanese, which was built by the government of Japan. Putin Shi Ga, so you need to see the press to start a key kite to Hoshi Tasket. Putin Shi Ga, Nihon, 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 And so actually, I'm proposing that Putin should be laying a wreath at this Japanese memorial,、uh, which was laid in Russia. I hope if there are any members of the Russian press、uh, here today that they can also take this message as a suggestion. Well, I'm going to say that 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 I'm going to
ずっと追求してきたあの特派員を生活を通じてですねそれからいまだに友人がいっぱいいます。まあ、このアメリカの友人たちとの話なども通じてやはり日本はつくづくまだまだアメリカという国を知らないということを考えております。And、uh, so I would like to、uh, end the brief time that we have today. I hope that you have、um, been able to comprehend my message. But as someone who for many years has been studying or following the United States during my time as a correspondent and following as well through many conversations with friends in the US and so on as well, I very much strongly feel that there is a great deal which Japan does not yet know or understand about the United States. まあ、特に私はやはりこの何て言うか日本の明治における日本のアメリカ研究の非常にあのプアなコンディションというものがですねいまだに影響出ていてこれはもう最後の一つの事実として皆さんに申し上げますけど日本の大学東京大学で、まあ、日本の代表する大学でアメリカの憲法について教え始めたのはですね1923年なんですね大正15年。つまり明治の維新から55年間アメリカに日本はその<笑>石油とかそういう経済では依存しながら文化的にはアメリカをルックダウンしたメンタリティがありましてドイツ中心の、まあ、立国でありました、まあ、それをやはりこの際ですね、まあ、オバマさんの,、まあこの戦後70年経ってのこの71年経ってのアメリカ大統領の初めてのあの喧嘩日本でお線香をあげてくれるということの出来事の中から日本人はそこまで過去まで遡ってね深く考えなきゃいけないんじゃないかと思っております。どううもありがとうございました And the last fact or the last point which I would like to share with you before we go into the Q&A time as well is that this fact of Japan not understanding or knowing enough about the United States has continued since even the Meiji era, I believe it's been in a poor condition. As an example, if we look at the University of Tokyo, which is one of the you know, representative most famous universities here in Japan, it was not until the year 1923 that this university started to actually teach about the constitution of the United States. This was 55 years after the Meiji restoration. At the time, economic In regards to import of oil and so on, Japan was dependent on the United States. However, culturally, I believe that、uh, Japan continued to、uh, have a mentality of looking down on the United States from that time as well. It was very much German centered in the way that it was looking at the world. And so, if we consider the situation where now, finally, 71 years after the end of World War II, President Obama will be the first president to visit Hiroshima and lay a wreath and burn incense there, I think it's very important for us at Japanese to look deeper and to look at this historical aspect as well. Well. Okay, well, we now do move into the question and answer session.、Uh, unfortunately, there's、uh, very limited time, so I'm going to、uh, limit our questions to begin with to working press members.、Uh, the microphone is here, so when I call on you, please give your name and affiliation before asking your questions. And I see Christoph first. Süddeutsche Zeitung, Germany, Neidhardt.、Uh, thank you very much for your speech, especially your last points、uh, about Nanking and Chongqing and so on. Because your comparison to、uh, Herzog's speech in Dresden doesn't work without Willy Brandt's visit to Warsaw in 1970, which was 25 years earlier. So, shouldn't Japan first go to Nanjing and to Chongqing? Like,、uh, To, to apologize or to, to do you what you call rest diplomacy before uh, uh, to reconciliate with, with the United States. You are very focused on the United States. The second question is Germany gave up huge uh, uh, territories at the end of、uh, the Second World War. Japan is、uh, absolutely unwilling to give up parts of four islands in the north. Do you think? I, I, don't you think this government is the least likely government since the Second World War for closure to the Second World War? I'm sorry, I'm、uh, 82 years old. I'm, my, my hearing is not so perfect. So, yes, yes. そういうふうに考えると日本の場合は先に南京と重慶の方に行って、うんまあ、そういったようなあの喧嘩などをしてからのアメリカとの和解の方が、はいまあ、順番としてはどうなるんでしょうか、はいはいはい、そして2つ目の方はドイツは戦後に多くの領土を、まあ、あのギブアップしたというような、まあ、あの
領土を譲ったというようなことが戦後にあったんですけれども、はい、日本の今の政権の立場を見ると、はい、例えば北方領土ですとかそういうのは譲るようなことも全くないんですけれども、はい、今の政権というのはそのけじめをつけるという意味では、はいまあ、一番、まあ、最も、まあ、できない政権というふうな見方もあると思うんですけれども、はい、それについてもお願いします。はいはいあのまさしくそれを最初の第一点はですね私はあの同意見でありましてブラントさんがやったことがあった、まあ、つまり先ほどちょっと私はしょりましたけどあのようやくあのちょっとはしょりました短くそれ触れなかったけどドイツの50年間の歩みっていうのはそういう意味でありますあのブラントさんの,あの,あの,その,あの行動とかそういうのを含めてドイツが50年の努力の後でドレスデンのまあ、変装億円が出てきたというふうに捉えております。Uh, first of all, in regards to your first point, I do very much share that same opinion.、Uh, I somewhat skipped over the details in my presentation. However, when I spoke about the, the 50 years experience in the post war time of Germany, this was also very much referring to the acts of Brandt, for example, as things which enabled that conciliation ceremony to be possible、uh, at that、uh, later time as well. So, very much looking at those 50 years and these acts towards or which built up to allow that to happen was what I was referring to. So, yes, I agree with you. それから2番目の政権の問題ですね、日本の政権、これ、私、政治部の記者ではないので、あまり適任者ではありませんけど、私も今、あなたのご質問に対する答えるのは、あもうやはり安倍さんの、安倍さんと今、私の一番新しい、まあ、情報に基づく考え方では、安倍さんと安倍内閣の中にいる人たち、日本のコンサーバティブ、安倍さんを支えている人たちとの間の、まあ、本当に一体かどうかということに、ちょっとあの、まあ、あの疑いの目を持っております。And in regards to your second question,、uh, well, my particular specialty is not、uh, politics. I'm not from the politics text and so on, so perhaps I'm not the best person to give a comment about the current Japanese administration.、Uh, however,、uh, one thing which we are really hearing about is if we look at Prime Minister Abe, his administration, and also his cabinet, particularly with some recent information, it also leads us to question about or have some doubts about whether the conservatives within his cabinet and Prime Minister Abe are necessarily. As one, are they necessarily unified in terms of their position? So, I think that the government is a very important part of the government. まあ、陰謀説って日本人の間で非常にまあ好きですから日本人は陰謀っていうことがね、まあ、その点であのそういう意見もあることは知ってますしかし私が期待するのは皮肉なことですけど安倍さんそのヒムセルフですね去年の7月の談話それから12月の日韓合意を見ていますとね安倍さんもその現実的な政治家としてやはり日本の国益を考えるとそういうそのあのオプションの一つとして考えてくれるんではないかという期待を込めて私としては申し上げているわけです。And、uh, when we look at, for example, certain parts within、uh, Prime Minister Abe's administration from some of the conservative members as well, there are even people who have you know, conspiracy theories that are talking about even in relation to Pearl Harbor, for example. I think、uh, conspiracy theories are something which many Japanese people tend to quite like or have a tendency to go towards.、Uh, however, in somewhat of an ironic way, perhaps, actually, I am placing my hope actually in Prime Minister Abe himself. If you look at the contents of his July statement of last year. And Also, the December、uh, agreement with、uh, South Korea. I think this shows that perhaps Prime Minister Abe is a realistic politician who, when he's considering Japanese national interests, is looking at these options realistically about how to go towards this direction. So it is in Prime Minister Abe that I'm placing my hope in that direction. Mark, please. Uh, Mr. Matsuo, my name is Kelly Olson from Agence France Press. I have two questions.、Uh, the first is why do you think it's taken、uh, almost 71 years for an American president to, to, to visit、uh, either Hiroshima or Nagasaki? And, and why, why do you think、uh, President Obama、uh, has been the first one to do it? And my second question is given the,、uh, the extreme cruelty and Uh, bloodiness of the、uh, fighting between Japan and the United States during World War II, culminating in the unprecedented violence of the dropping of the atomic bombs. Why do you think it is that over the past 70 years, given that there have been many ups and downs and tensions within the US Japan relationship, why do you think that these two countries 
have been able to forge uh, such a close uh, alliance, such a close uh, economic relationship, and actually, quite honestly, close friendship between the peoples. Why do you think they've been able to do that? Thank you. I'm afraid that there are time constraints. That's probably the last question. まあ、マッカーサー戦場とは何であったかという問題まで私は出てくると思います。I uh, have also questioned about why it was that it's taken 71 years for this to happen and actually recently in an interview with the Asahi are going to some detail about this. Um, but actually my answer links somewhat to your second question as well. Uh, if we look at particular characteristics of the Japanese people is one aspect, but I think it's important to look at the nature of the occupation under MacArthur and I think that gives us some of the answers. つまり and I think that this occupation was, uh, could be said to be quite um, peculiar. It was a form of occupation which perhaps had no precedent or similar model in any other country in the world. And so the uh, United States soldiers or the GIs who came to Japan as part of these occupation forces, for example, uh, there was a particular characteristic there. And so actually if we look at the fact that in Germany uh, under the US occupation there were you know guerrillas resisting against that occupation for example there was resistance within Germany to the US occupation however in Japan you did not see such cases as well there were not cases of you know GIs being killed by guerrillas and so on And I think this leads us to the question of the lack of closure for the Japanese people following the war as well but to go into detail about that, I'd have to ask for a whole another hour, actually. And one of the particular characteristics, I think, as well, and this is something I noticed in the process of making the English translation of these documents, but the word which was for a very long time used to refer to the occupation uh, in Japan was called the Shinchugun, which is a word which is actually not directly translatable into English, but which has quite a different nuance to uh, the word which is used for occupation. And actually, it was at the end of August uh, in the year 1945 that the occupation forces started to be called on Shinchugun, which is sort of like a stationed uh, troops and so on. It, it doesn't quite directly translate. So あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あ
the occupation. And if we continue to use this euphemism and not recognize the fact that Japan did lose the war and was occupied after the war, then we will not be able to go forward, not be able to make progress. However, his article was actually cut by the censorship within the GHQ at the time. And so it's actually a historical fact that the GHQ itself was preferring this ambiguous euphemism which was being used in Japanese. いるけども and so when I refer to, well, we need to look back at the facts of the MacArthur occupation, these are just one example of one of the things I'm looking at. Of course, Japan and the United States have maintained a very close relationship in these years, but I think we have to question at the core whether that relationship is as close as we really understand or believe that it is. And it's looking at these euphemisms or uh, ambiguous terms and so on. And actually, it's only when we start to really look at the occupation as it was that Japan can also start to look back on its war crimes, for example, or the situation during the war. One other point which I would like to raise, which I believe is uh, significant in regards to this, is the fact that uh, Japanese war crimes were not in the post-war period tried by the Japanese people themselves. There was, of course, the Tokyo Tribunal. However, this was not being tried at the hands of Japanese people. And the fact that this has not happened in the time since is one also uh, particularly significant uh, point. <laughs> And so the fact that it was only the Tokyo tribunals which took place in Japan, I think, is also one of the points which is leading to well, the situation we have now in our hands in regards to the Yasukuni Shrine. Deutsch the Nuremberg Tribunal is the Yasukuni Shrine. However, if we look at the case of Germany, it's quite different. Of course, there were the trials in Nuremberg, but as well as this, there are also trials that were uh, by the German people themselves. And even today, there are cases, for example, uh, going into the courts in regards to massacre or killings of Jewish people and so on as well. So this is being done by the German people. And, and the final point I would like to make today is as well as if we look at the post-war cabinet of Japan, they actually did try to build a law in regards to war crimes which would even bring the death penalty as well. However, this was actually quashed by the GHQ at the time as well. So these are important points, I think, when we're looking at the historical aspects. And so I believe that uh, President Obama's upcoming visit to Hiroshima is really posing these kinds of questions for the Japanese people at this time. I just want to clarify one point. I believe early in his answer he also described the occupation as kandai, which would be tolerant, and uh, GI, which would be merciful, I guess, or something like yes, that? Yes, okay. yes. Okay. All right, well, uh, thank you very much uh, for joining us today. Uh, as you know, he is one of our members, so uh, not only do you get a chance to see him here in a press conference, but you can probably see him some days out in the main bar to find out more. Uh, and, uh, but however, uh, since we cannot give him an honorary membership, we can give him a bottle of wine to celebrate this press conference. So thank you very much for joining Thank you for your... Thank you very much. And that concludes uh, today's event. So thank you for joining us and please come soon to our next press conference.